Welcome to The Full Spectrum. I'm Davy Alba for IEEE Spectrum. We're here today with Andy Molson from Microsoft Research. He's here to tell us about Infrastructs, a research project that pioneers techniques for reading hidden information in objects. Infrastructs lets you embed binary codes, 3D watermarks, and geometric shapes into 3D printed objects. And then it reads it back with terahertz scanning. Andy, welcome. Hi, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for joining us. So what exactly is Infrastructs and how does it work? So there are all different kinds of imaging technologies that we're interested in. This is um, uh, some work that we, where we've investigated terahertz imaging. So we put the 3D printing uh, stuff together with the terahertz imaging uh, techniques that are out there and uh, combine them in an inter interesting way to embed patterns within uh, 3D printed objects. People are studying various techniques like uh, object recognition in, uh, com in the field of computer vision. Infostrux does something rather differently where we actually make it relatively easy to identify an object by uh, constructing a, um, a, uh, a recognizable pattern underneath the surface. So you've probably also seen um, uh, techniques in augmented reality, for example, where you actually put a, a printed code on the surface of an object. Uh, so this is a little bit related to that, where we're looking at different kinds of uh, binary patterns on objects, except that we don't have to make the object look different here. We actually can hide the pattern underneath the surface and make it part of the structure itself. Um, another sort of related area would be uh, RFID. Uh, typically with RFID you need uh, you know, some kind of little circuit uh, embedded in the object along with an antenna, uh, you know, which requires its own fabrication considerations and manufacturing. And here we don't, we don't we don't need those kinds of uh, special circuitry and antennas. We actually just put the structure in the object and we rely on the terahertz scanning uh, to recover that. Um, another application would be uh, embedding a, what's called a gray code um, in, the, in the object. And that's a particular binary pattern which actually uh, varies over the surface of the object. And when you recover the binary pattern, you actually then know exactly where you are in the binary pattern. There, I mean, there are limits to sort of what you can do. We found the, that the approach worked best when we, um, when we had material and then uh, interfacing with uh, a void or an air pocket within the material. Uh, since, what, since chiefly what you have is um, the ability to sense uh, changes in the index of refraction of the material. Uh, so the, and the biggest and easiest way to create a change in the index of refraction is to go from the 3D printed material to air. And so that gives you a big jump in the index of refraction. That's the part that you know, these interfaces reflect very nicely in the terahertz domain. So is it possible to combine the different tags that you talked about into one object? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, you could, certainly you could, you know, can, you could construct an object where part of the uh, object has a certain tag scheme, then another part has a different tag scheme. One idea is to just print in uh, some kind of identifier within the object so that the camera can actually uh, look at some part of under the structure underneath the surface of the object and identify it very quickly. So what exactly inspired you to do this work? Um, why 3D printing? Uh, so this, this work was pursued by uh, Carl Willis, uh, who was an intern, in trying to figure out what to do, uh, what kind of uh, projects would interest both of us. We, we both came to this uh, this particular combination of his interest in 3D printing and mind and sensing. What sorts of challenges did you run into while you were developing this project? And can you expand on some of those? Give us examples. Well, so there's um, there are a couple of interesting challenges. One is just in uh, understanding the limits of the technology. Uh, so we, uh, Carl and I, uh, put together a bunch of uh, prototypes that just uh, tried to test the limits of what you could sense with uh, terahertz imaging, and so that involved building very specialized little uh, objects that you know looked at varied varied the angle, for example, uh, that the beam would actually hit the objects. So we performed a number of different uh, tests like this. weren't weren't especially useful, but then allowed us to uh, perform some examination later processing of this of the scans to determine that yes, you could get away with, you know, so you could see a surface that was up to I think about. Uh, 15 degrees uh, away from the uh, the camera, so that was the first thing, just sort of establishing the the performance of the device, and then um, and then that led us into designing the actual uh, patterns themselves, just trying to figure out what what kinds of structures 
uh, you can uh, at first um, uh, fabricate with a 3D printer or a laser cutter, or other kinds of uh, uh, digital fabrication techniques. And then in concert with that, to be able to write uh, computer programs that can efficiently and, and uh, reliably recover those patterns. So that was definitely uh, one of the more challenging aspects of the, of the work. So this um, technology kind of lends itself, actually, this is one of our first thoughts, to sci-fi sort of spying applications, passing secret messages using objects where you embed these messages in these seemingly innocent looking objects. Um, yeah. Can you say anything to that? Well, one, the thing of it is it has, that it's a little tricky because the, that message has to be has to be there at the time the object is created. Like you can't just sort of tuck it into an existing object. And uh, I'm really reminded now that I think about it of you know some of the stuff that uh, Craig Venter's company is doing, where they you know assembling DNA strings and then you know putting a copyright uh, message in there um, and uh, or encoding other kinds of of data into in, into DNA. And I think this you know it's the kind of thing you can do uh, um, and you know. Uh, kind of invisibly, I guess. Is that sci-fi? I mean, it, it seems to me like all this stuff is like, um, you know, not too far off. Great. Thanks so much for your time, Andy. Thanks. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Andy Wilson from Microsoft Research about the Infrastructs project. For IEEE Spectrum, I'm Davey Alba. Mm -hmm.